So welcome back to Obviously Foy Talk, and I'm delighted to say we are now joined by a man um, that went viral, it's pretty safe to say. Yeah, in um, the space of one day. In the space of one day, it went viral. Um, a lot of people are talking about stuff he said. They should be talking about what he done in the cage, in the yeah. Bellator cage, at Bellator 175. We are now joined by Steve Thunderbeast Cazola. Steve, thanks for taking the time to come on to Obviously Foy Talk. Oh, man, thank you guys so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. Pleasure. Thank you guys. You guys are awesome. Excellent. It's been not too long. How do you feel after the fight? I feel phenomenal. Um, I'm 100% good to go. I'm just waiting to get a call about London. Let's go. Let's make it happen. I don't know why there's any hesitation. It was less than 30 seconds. I'm healthy. I'm ready. I stay in shape. I stay consistent. Let's do it again. Let's go. So I'm assuming that you haven't had any talks with Bellator yet about getting on the London card. They haven't called. I talked to my manager. I talked to my manager, Tiki, um, and let him know uh, as soon as the fight was over, like, hey, I want you to start working on this. I talked to uh, the matchmaker and uh, you know Scott Coker after uh, immediately, like in the cage. I told him I want London. So there's no secret about where I'm trying to go right now, and I don't see why there's a problem with uh, me getting on there. I think the main card needs a, another spot filled out. I think I've shown that I can be a very exciting fighter who goes in for finishes, knockouts in particular. So let's make it happen. Let's go. Send me over. You only have to look down your record and see exactly what you said. You are a finisher. Um, plenty of knockouts on the resume. Um, submission as well. Talk to us about the fight with Jake Roberts. Coming into it, Rob commented when he was looking at it. It was a very Conor McGregor, Jose Aldo-esque finish where you caught him with the, the left hook coming in. Was that something you worked on? I've watched a, a good few of your fights back and you throw two finishes finish and um, but talk us just through that fight on saturday well i came in very mentally prepared and very ready on all aspects physically mentally spiritually and uh, my confidence going into that is always going to you know be something that i carry with me so i knew i was going to be the faster opponent uh, uh i knew i was going to be better striking even though some critics said that he had better boxing me i had to, I had to go in there and prove him wrong i had the best coaches i have the best team i have the best preparation around I me mean, my boxing coach manny torres is a phenomenal boxing coach my te teammates at team quest and all the coaches there oceanside jiu-jitsu it's just an amazing championship environment that i have around me which leads to uh, finishes there's a lot of excitement um, around Bellator at the moment uh, since Scott Coker came on. It's been kind of going leaps and bounds and they've been signing up guys. You fought for Bellator back in 2000, or 2015 and now you have your first fight back since then. Um, what's it, how's it been different since uh, the last time you fought in Bellator? Have you noticed any differences backstage? Has it changed any at all? Everything's really just a lot more organized. I mean, they're obviously improving. They're getting better at what they're doing. They're constantly evolving with everything so it's awesome i love it i love to see progression because that's always what i'm looking for to make sure i'm the best version of myself and bellator is going to make sure they're the best version of themselves and signing all these great new names you know uh i think it's phenomenal for the sport it's really going to put bellator on the map so i'm honored to be back i think i'm coming back at a just perfect time and happen to have a great moment leading off you know a fight uh in my hometown of chicago illinois starting out the main card and uh, showing a devastating knockout so the stars are aligning finally and i couldn't be more thankful more blessed Let's talk about the the viral video as well going around now of Jimmy Smith. Sorry, seems like he snuck it up on you a little bit that uh, Dylan Dennis was sitting in the crowd. It was a very respectful call out and also like almost like um, a principal giving out to his students, sort of saying, "Come on, stop hanging around with the cool kids and trying to act like them." <laughs> well, but was there and did you were you aware that Dylan was in the crowd that this was going to happen or was this just a spur of the moment thing? I was aware that was going to happen. Um, you know, we talked about it a little bit, um, you know, pre-fight interview. Uh, I told him I wanted to call him. That's where I initially was like, I want to, you know, this is a guy I want to fight if he's coming down to 55. Uh, I told him my beliefs in terms of him, you know, not thinking that he is an authentic person, that he's copying Conor McGregor right now. And I just wanted to express my thoughts, and Jimmy Smith was uh, kind enough to give me that opportunity, and we made it happen, and, uh, you know, it, it's awesome. But, you know, I wasn't expecting for it to be so so set up like that. I was planning on just myself getting on the mic and, you know, calling him out on my own. But the fact that uh, Jimmy and uh, Bellator guys were able to lead me right into it was awesome. It made it more professionally done. Is that something that you think about um, before the fight, if you get the win, that you want to get on the mic, you want to say something? Because it's been working for guys like Mickey Gall who's been calling people out and, and stuff. And it doesn't have to be disrespectful, but there's a lot of guys who will get a huge win and then they'll just say, I want to thank my coaches, I want to thank this, and then people forget about them. Is that something that you think about to say, I'm going to say something, this is my spotlight, I want to say something that will push me forward? Not, yes and no. Yes, because you know the, the promotion for your next fight starts immediately once that fight is done. 
you know, it, it's right then and there. So there's no hesitation. You got to be able to know what you want, where you want to go, who you want, and, you know, play out a couple different scenarios. But at the same time, do not be looking past what's right in front of you. That is your goal. You have to take care of business in order for the other thing to happen. So make sure you're not getting too far ahead of yourself. So I had an idea of I, that I wanted to be in London. I knew I wanted to call Dylan Downs and put him on blast for some of the things that, you know, I think are a problem. And then, you know, but never getting outside the fact that I have to make sure I have Jake Roberts in front of me. He's a tough fighter. He's got a great record. He's a good human being, and he's going to come and bring it. So if I don't come and bring it myself, then, I, you know, the, the whole post-fight interview doesn't happen if you lose concentration. So got to make sure that you're staying in your lane in terms of finishing and seeing what's in front of you, taking care of business, and then you can move on to the next thing. And how realistic do you think the Dylan Dennis fight is? Because you're quite experienced. You're eight now. Dylan Dennis hasn't had an MMA fight. He's done very well in jiu-jitsu. He's black belt. But how realistic do you think that fight is to happen? I hope it happens. I mean, I wouldn't have said it. I wouldn't have said if it's not. I mean, if he can make 55, why shouldn't it happen? He's a Marcelo Garcia black belt. He's got plenty of titles. He's making all this money apparently, and he's acting like he's you know the man. Let's go. Like, what's what's the problem? If you're this good, you're saying you're not fearing anyone, you got all these skills, then what is the problem? There shouldn't be a problem. But if he wants to fight some tomato cans, I guess that's fine. I don't get any pleasure out of fighting tomato cans. Like that's not cool. I don't I don't I don't see any pleasure in that, so I don't know what's his thing with that. Or I mean, can he even make the weight? Probably not, to be honest with you. I mean he said I mean he says he can make it down to fifty five. I mean he was missing weight for grappling tournaments at like one seventy doing catch rates at one eighty. You know, so I don't even know if he can make the weight. And uh, if he can't make the weight, if he can only go at 70, that's fine. My teammate, Fernando Gonzalez, he'll eventually run into him, whether it's sooner or later, and he'll absolutely smash him. So either way, it's it's not going to work out the long run for him. Maybe he'll have some short success, you know, because it'll give him 0-0, 1-0, 0-1, or, you know, whatever guys that aren't really well-known or really well-established. And uh, they'll do his thing. They'll make their money. But, man, eventually he's going to run into someone who's for real, and it's just not going to be a good night for him. So if the Dylan Dennis fight doesn't happen, realistically, is there anyone else out there? Because I can see on Twitter today, like you're saying here, you were talking about you want on um, London as well. So is there anyone else realistically that you'd be looking at, Steve, that you'd, you'd want to, um, that you think will progress you to the next? Because that's what I, from what I'm getting from what you're saying, it seems you want the guy that's going to progress you. You're not too interested in just fighting, as you said, tomato cans. You want the progression fight. So is there anyone else out there that you feel Absolutely. is next for you? Absolutely. I mean, ideally, if I'm going to London, I would like to fight someone from that area. You know, I want to give, whether it's giving someone else an opportunity, whether it's someone who's already in Bellator, who, you know, who needs a fight, you know, any lightweight European guy who can, who wants to come in and fight me, I would gladly take the fight. You know, the closer to it is to the hometown, the better. You know, I want to come, I just had my amazing opportunity of being a hometown guy. Now I need to give someone else that opportunity for being a hometown guy. But again i'm i'm coming in prepared i'm coming in focused more than ever so you know be careful um but realistically i don't know any off the top of my head as far as like guys from london or european guys but i do want to fight adam piccolotti for sure so if they don't mind putting piccolotti and me on the london card i would love that he's nine and oh i'm eight no he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu and i'm sure people now want to see how i do against a black belt in jiu-jitsu can they get through my hands let's find out are you looking to be uh, quite active this year? I believe you only had one fight last year. Um, are you looking to be more active this year? Absolutely. We got one down. I want to get at least another three or four, at least. I want to finish out. I want to, already fin- I want to be able to, by the end of the year, finish out my contract with Bellator. We'll renegotiate, and then we'll see what comes next. Let's do it. How many fights do you have on that contract with Bellator? Three more. Three more. And is, it, is um, the lightweight division, it's so stacked in... Con- Overall in MMA, not just in Bellator, not just in the UFC, just there's so many good lightweights out there. Is that something that you thrive on? There's such good competition out there to fight? Absolutely. I mean, if, if you're the best in the lightweight division, you're one of the best pound for pound in the world. And you you got to take uh, great pride in that, and you also got to make sure that you're working your butt off to do it because there's many guys, many amazing, talented, gifted, hardworking fighters in here, so I can't slag at all, and I won't. I'm going to always evaluate, improve what I need to do Make sure I'm working out, enhancing my strengths, working on my weaknesses, and getting after it and make sure I come in at 100% ready to go every single time I fight, which is what I do. And we we found, we got something here as well because um, one, of the, one of the funniest um, interviews you've done recently or kind of articles that was about you is about your nickname, how you came about, <laughs> and it was, it was more of a joke than anything, and, and it kind of stuck. So we thought, you know, it's a, it's a great nickname in my opinion, but 
you said it was a bad nickname. So we have a list of a list of five here, and you can rate them uh, on one to ten. Ten being a very bad nickname, and one being it, it's it's a good nickname. It's, it's good. So Noel's gonna call out the list here. So one being horrendously bad, or sorry, a good, and ten being very bad. So first up, we have Corey Beeston, twenty-five eight Anderson. We have, we have what? What's the nickname? Corey Beeston. 25 8 instead of 24 so it's, it's, 7 so he's basically. Beast, he's beast in 25 8 uh, instead of 25 uh, 7. Uh, too 7. long. Too yeah. long. Um, too long. 10. Too long. It's very too bad. Long. So well, this, this is. This <laughs> Way is, too long. Yeah. It's longer than Thunder Beast. It's too long. <laughs> this is one of Rob's favorite is Nick the Promise Ring. <laughs> I want. Um, Man, promise ring. I mean, no, I, I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> promise ring is just like, I mean, that's very like high school, like promise ring type of thing. Man, I'm married. Go for it. Go, <laughs> all or nothing, man. You know, married with a kid now. Enough promise rings. That's, that's not, that's not thing. So that's going to be a below a five for sure. Um, <laughs> Don, the police officer cop. It's a, it's a pun. No good. That's below a five as well. <laughs> I mean, hey, I'm not even giving. I won't even give Thunder Beast above a five. Let me put it that way too. I just want to point that out. <laughs> I do not think my nickname is anything special. It's just one of those I was given, and I got to keep it now. You know, it's all good. So, uh, and for for those guys that these are your nicknames, I am not hating. I'm sure you're in the same situation. Yeah. Where someone gave it to you, and you just got to write it out. It's we'll, all good. We'll give you two more. We'll give you two more to rate, and then my favorite one. So, uh, two more yeah. to rate. Logan the Pink Pounder. Clark. Oh my god, that's a zero. What are you <laughs> kidding me? Come on. It's not even that's that's it's not even clever. Classy at some sense. Yeah. Uh Steve the creepy weasel Montgomery. Creepy weasel. Man, why are you putting yourself in the why are you name like that's a that's a bad corner. You don't want to be in the creepy weasel corner. Why would you want to do that? <laughs> and my favorite, it's not on the <laughs> list here. Real, huh? Yeah, yeah real, these yeah. are real. The real oh people. Oh my gosh, what it, what is this? So I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you a name and see can you put the nickname into it. It's an Irish fighter. He was an MMA fighter and he's now a, he's a toy fighter as well. My toy fighter. So his name is James Heelan. So if your name was James Heelan, what would you make your nickname? Putting you on the spot. Ooh. James Hellfire Heelan. Ooh. That's not bad. It's James <laughs> Sexual Heelan. <laughs> <laughs> and he comes out I to Sexual Heelan. I get it. I get it. Yeah, at least it makes sense, I suppose. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Well, look, the Thunder Beast it is, and the Thunder Beast by nature as well. Stunning performance, um, getting it done in 28 seconds is the official time against Jake Roberts. We hope you get on the London card. We'd love to see a welcome Dylan Dennis into the MMA world. Um, and we wish you the best of luck, and your little man sitting on your lap as well. Yeah, say, say what's up, Bubba. This is the little, this is mini beast right here. <laughs> right? That's mini Little beast. beast is gonna mini come. Beast. Watch this. I mean, you think I'm making noise? This guy will make noise much louder than I'll ever will. I'm gonna start him early. <laughs> we wait for him. But he's my man. But you know, over everything, man, over fighting and everything like that, it's always about family. So being a dad, being a husband is always gonna be uh, number one and number one. So, so, you know, this is amazing. Thank you guys so much for having me on. It's an honor. It's a pleasure. It's uh, amazing getting all this. Uh, you know, exposure and everything. And this, you know, thank you so much to Bellator and Tiki for getting me on this platform and it's it's i'm gonna enjoy this ride man but you know again i'm gonna stay true to myself and true to my roots of you know hey this this little man right here and providing for him and my wife and being a family man that's that's who i am that's that's my authentic self to my core and i will never you know i will always uh work hard to honor them and making sure that they're proud you know i want to be this little man's hero more than anything in the world so this is my bigger purpose this is what i fight for and this is why i'm getting finishes right here very well. I said. love that. From from a father myself, um, I always ask fighters, does it give you that extra fire? After what you just said, we don't need to ask you that yeah. question. You've answered it in that statement. Steve, an absolute pleasure yeah. speaking to you. Uh, we'd love to speak to you again in the future as well. We hope you get on the London card, and thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, man. Let's promote that. Let's get me on the London card. I will come on any time you guys will have me. I appreciate it. God bless you guys. Take care. Take I'm care, my man. Cheers. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.